morning for obvious reasons. I won't have much of a voice left. John the, I'm sorry, James the second chapter. James the second chapter, the 18th verse. Tuesday night we talked about the Word of God. And we talked, Brother Bruce, how that in a world where you can't depend on nothing, seems like, and most of the time nobody. We talked about how that you can depend on God's Word. You see, man's Word fluctuates, if I could use a fancy word this morning. People will tell you things and sometimes they intentionally don't do it and other times just things happen and they're not able to do it. So we find in our own lives and we've learned through our own walk and relationships with people that you cannot always depend on the Word of man. Amen. They'll tell you that they'll do things for you and for some reason or another maybe they'll, they don't ever do them. They'll promise you something and promises are broken. But thank God today that there is something that we can depend on. It's not the stock market, not the almighty dollar. I don't even think it's the almighty dollar anymore. Amen? Amen. It ain't got much might left. <clears throat> can't buy much for a dollar anymore. You can't depend on the world. You can't depend on religion. But you can depend on God's Word. What he said 2,000 years ago is still the same today. Rock solid. Will not be moved. Will not pass away. And that's kind of what we talked about Tuesday night when we talked about having faith not in denomination, not in religion, not in your church, not in a preacher, not in your pastor, your teacher, your evangelist, but faith in God's Word. And James says in the second chapter, the 18th verse, James says, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Talking about having faith, it's one thing to profess faith and say, Oh, I believe, I believe, I believe. It's another thing when you begin to stand on what you believe. You can sit at home all day long and talk about how much faith you got. But until you act upon that, it's really just dead, dormant. And James is saying, you might say that I have works. <clears throat> Thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe. And tremble. See, the devil has faith. Amen? Amen. The devil believes. But believing and putting that belief to practice is two different things. And we learned Tuesday night that until we have faith in the right thing, our faith is wasted. You can work 40 hours a week. I've heard people say they don't have any faith, but yes, sure you do. You went to work all this week with the faith that on Friday you were going to get a paycheck. So we've got faith this morning, but we put our faith in all the wrong things. In the year 2011, people put their faith in the stock market, and many of them, many of them were let down because the stock market didn't do what they thought it would do. In the year 2011, many people put their faith in people, and people let them down. Throughout the past year, maybe you're somebody that experienced this. Some of your family members turned their back on you. Some of your best friends walked away from you. You went through situations. People that you thought would never leave your side left. And the harsh reality set in on you that, hey, who can I depend on? This is the one person I thought that I have. Have you ever been to that place before? You thought, surely if I can depend on anybody, I can depend on this person. And for some reason or another, maybe it wasn't their fault. But they let you down. And you realized, hey, I can't depend on them anymore. Or at least not as much as I thought I could. But if we'll put our faith in God's Word this morning, and I ain't talking about feeling, like I said Tuesday night, if you go by feeling, the way you feel gets you in hell. I don't feel like going to church. I don't feel like serving God. I don't feel like doing anything. If you ride your feelings, you'll ride your feelings right on into hell because it don't have anything to do with the way we feel this morning. Amen? It has to do with whether we believe God. 
It has to do with whether we have faith in God's Word. And that's the only thing this morning that you can put your faith in and it never lets you down. God's Word has never changed. People have changed. Their promises have changed. Different things throughout your life, I'm sure. Everyone in here, everyone in here has got a few years behind them. Amen. Amen. And through those years, we have seen so many things change. But oh, my honey, not God. God's still the same God. His Word is still the same. His Word never changes. And there's not but one place this morning we can put our faith, and that is in the Word of God, and build a solid foundation on, and that is faith in His Word. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 and 8 that for by grace are we saved through faith. The Bible says in order to come to God, Brother Bruce, we must first believe that He is God. We must first believe that He is. You're here this morning because you have faith. Oh, you may not think you have as much faith as you need, and maybe none of us do. I think faith grows. I think that we have faith, and I think that the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I believe as we read God's Word, I believe as we worship the Lord, I believe as we listen to preaching and, and we soak in the teaching of God, I believe that our faith grows. And through life experiences, every one of us have seen, has seen God do things for us in our lives. And through that, faith has grown. So all of us have faith. And I'm telling you this morning, you've got faith or you wouldn't have got up out of bed and came to church. Why? Why would you be here this morning if you didn't believe there was a God? Why would you care? You'd be out doing your own thing or you'd still be home in the bed. But you're here this morning because you have faith. And that faith, really what faith does is really all goes back to, I know we have faith in Jesus. I know we have faith in God. But all of that really, see you can't separate Jesus and His Word. You can't separate the Father and His Word because they're one. All of it really goes back to, do we have faith in God's Word this morning? And we talked about how that four times in the Bible, it says the just shall live by feelings. I'll tell you what it says. It didn't say the just shall live by feelings. It says the just shall live by faith. Faith in what? Faith in God's Word. Faith that His promises are not going to fail. Amen? Faith that His promises are not only just for Abraham, for Isaac and Jacob, but His promises are for us today. Faith that whenever He said all things work together for good to them that love God and are the call according to His purpose, that He was going to accomplish that Word. Faith that when the Word of God says, Brother Rodney, that His Word will accomplish that which He sends it forth to do, and Brother Bruce, it will not return void. Faith that He will come through on that promise. Amen. Faith in God's... I know every one of Now listen. Being a person of faith does not mean you're some kind of superhuman. I know sometimes that we think, well, you know, I'm just not as spiritual as they are. And sometimes we, we lift people up and we think well, they're really a person of faith so they never doubt. Every one of us doubt. There's not but one person that ever walked this earth that was perfect and that was Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Not anybody that we ever put up on a pedestal. Not the person you follow within your denomination. Not your pastor. Not your leaders. Not your teachers. None of them are perfect. Every one of us struggle with faith. Every one of us at one time or another have struggled. But that's not the crux of the matter. A person of faith is not someone who never doubts because our flesh is going to doubt. A person of faith that is, is someone who, in spite of their doubt, in spite of their doubt, the doubt of their carnal fleshly mind, they still say, I know that God's Word is true. A person of faith is like Job who said, Though God slay me, yet will I serve Him. <laughs> a person of faith is someone like Job who you know by the words that he spoke in his book that he had doubts, that he struggled, that he wondered why, that he questioned God. Yet you find him saying, I know that my Redeemer lives. That's what faith is. 
Faith is not understanding it all. Faith is questioning God, but still believing in His Word that what God said, God will do. And you may not be able to depend on Mama 100% of the time. You may not be able to depend on Daddy 100% of the time. Or your children, or your relatives, or your best friend. But you can depend on the Word of God today. That's what faith is. Faith is believing that even though you don't feel saved, faith is believing God's Word when it says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you know that you've called upon His name. Faith is believing John 3.16 that says that God sent His Son that whosoever believeth on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Faith this morning has nothing to do with your feelings. It don't even have to do with, well, I've got some doubt. Well, join the crowd. Everybody does. Your flesh... Do you remember the man in the Bible that says, Lord, I believe, but help thou mine unbelief. Somehow we've been taught the false theory that in order for you to be a real person full of faith, you can never doubt. And that's not true. Because as long as we're in the flesh, there are going to be times that our flesh is weak. As long as we're in the flesh, there are going to be times that our old carnal mind can't grasp, and this is it's almost 100% of the time, our carnal mind cannot grasp the things of God. He said, my thoughts are above your thoughts. My ways are above your ways. He said, Brother Billy, you keep on serving the Lord because you understand it all, don't you? Oh my goodness, no. You keep on serving the Lord because you don't ever have any doubts. No, that's not true. <laughs> you get, you're, you're such a powerful person of faith that you never one time question God. Boy, that's a big lie. There, I don't know how many times I've said, Lord, why? Why? He's my father. How many fathers we got out there listening today? Brother Bruce, you're a father. Fathers don't get angry when their children say, why? Come to you with a heart broken and say, why did this happen? Oh, and how much more compassion does our Heavenly Father have? Amen. Amen. And I know that none of us have all the answers. But I can tell you today, I've never claimed to be a Bible scholar. I'm certainly a student of the Bible. I'm continuing to learn. I haven't arrived, but I have left a starting gate. Amen. I'm still growing. <clears throat> still learning. And I can't stand up here today and tell you all the mysteries. There are preachers, and I can name off a slew of them that are smarter than me. <clears throat> they can tell you the mysteries this morning. Brother Rodney, they can talk to you so deep you might get drowned if you try to understand it all. I can't do that. I'm just a simple country preacher. But I've got an answer for you this morning. You don't have to know all the mysteries. If you just put your faith in God's Word, you can make it. Amen. If you just put your faith in God's Word, you can make it. If you grab a hold of the Word of God and stand on it, you can make it. Because faith in His Word will see you through. Knowing that what God said, God will do. Knowing that because God said, if you would confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the grave, if you'll believe that, and you do believe that, or you wouldn't be here this morning. If you believe that, you're saved. That's where salvation comes from. I've had people say, well, I don't feel saved, but I ain't got nothing to do with it. It don't have anything to do with feeling. I know as Pentecostals, we love to feel it. And many times we think something's wrong if we don't, but there are just simply certain, certainly times that we go through that we do not feel it. I got up this morning, sore throat, aching all over. I didn't feel like getting up and trudging on through and coming to church. If I'd have went by my physical, my physical feelings, you wouldn't be seeing Brother Billy this morning. But I don't go by feeling. I go by faith in God's Word. Knowing that if I stand on His Word, I'll make it. Knowing that if I hold to His Word this morning, that no matter what wind blows, I'll still be able to stand in the last day because I'm trusting His Word. The just shall live by faith. We talked about Jairus over there in the book of Mark. How that whenever the Bible says 
in Mark the, the fifth chapter and thirty fifth verse, while he yet spake, there came a ruler of the synagogues whose house, <clears throat> which said, <clears throat> my, which said, thy daughter is dead. And he's talking about Jairus's daughter. Why troublest thou the master any farther? As soon as Jesus heard <clears throat> the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Only believe. He said, have faith in God. Mark 11 and 22. Only believe. Believe in what? We're talking about believing in the Word of God today. If they would just believe His Word, whenever they came and told Him, Lazarus is dead. He's sick. He's going to die. And Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. If they'd only believed in His Word, that they had the comfort of knowing that it didn't matter what happened. I know we're going to be troubled. I know there's going to be sorrow, but it's all going to be alright because Jesus said this sickness is not of the dead, but for the glory of God. But they had trouble believing His Word. Same way we do today. So we find that faith, the Bible says in Romans 10 and 17, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We find the Bible comparing faith to a a grain of mustard seed. And many times we talk about, well, you know, that means the size. I'm not, I'm not sure that's what that means today. The mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds. Yet whenever it's planted and it grows up, the birds, it gets so big, the birds can make nests in its, in its limbs there, in its branches. Why? The mustard seed is a persevering seed. That even, and you listen, as long as the mustard seed, if I brought one today and I laid it up here on the altar, it would never do anything but sit there. But the minute that mustard seed is taken and planted into the ground, a process begins to happen. Same way with your faith. Whenever you begin to step out in your faith, whenever you begin to put works and faith together, whenever you begin to stand upon the Word of God, you will begin to see something happen in your life. You will begin to have confidence not in you and not in the things of man, but in the Word of God. And when this mustard seed, the smallest of all seeds, whenever it's planted into the ground, it begins its journey into its maturity. And it faces a lot of things along the way. But see, a seed has a promise that if it's planted, if it's taken care of, it'll begin to grow. And that's the way it is with you today. You have a promise. God has promised you things in His Word. And His covenant is everlasting. His Word will never fail. The Bible says not one jot, not one tittle. Jesus said heaven and earth will pass away, but my words shall remain. My words will not pass away. The Bible says in the beginning was the Word of God. Amen. We find over there in the book of Genesis that the earth was out form and void, darkness was on the face of the deep. And God said, see God's Word was right there. His Word that came forth out of his mouth. And when God speaks it, it has to happen. God is not a man that he should lie. When he speaks it, it happens. Amen. <clears throat> so we learned some of this stuff. We learned over there in Joshua. How that whenever God came to Joshua and he spoke to him and he said, March around the walls of Jericho. Do this for seven days. On the seventh day, begin to blow the horns, begin to shout with a loud voice, and the walls will come down. And what they do? Day one, they marched around the walls. Day two, they marched around the walls. But Joshua's faith was not in the marching. Joshua's faith was not in the trumpets. Joshua's faith was not in the priests that carried the ark that went before them. Joshua's faith was in the promise that God made that if you will do this, the walls will fall. My faith this morning is not in Billy Douglas. My goodness, if it had been, I'd, done, I'd be home hiding under the covers. My faith this morning is that I am persuaded that He is able to keep that which I have committed unto Him against that. My faith this morning is in Jesus Christ and His Word. That better be where yours is at. Because that's the only thing that's going to see you through is faith in God's Word. The promises that you find within the pages of this old book, and this is a King James Version. If you've got one of those others, a lot of the promises ain't in there that God gave you. If you've got one of these this morning, every promise in the book is mine. Oh, every one of them. And they haven't passed away. They've never failed. 
God's promises are still true. And what happens on day seven? When the children of Israel march around the walls, they blow the trumpets, they shout, and the walls come tumbling down. Why? Because they had faith in God's Word. Not in the shout. I know people who have faith in the shout. Because when the shout ain't there, they think, there's something wrong. Amen? I know people today that have faith in the dance. And when the dance ain't there, something's wrong. But you can have faith this morning in God. And you can rest assured that your faith will not be in vain. We learn about the little widow woman. When Elijah, and I know these are stories that we've heard before, but do us all good to go back and hear them again. The little widow woman, she went out, her and her son starving to death. They got a little bit of meal, a little bit of oil. We've been there before, amen. amen. You ever been there where you went to the cabinet? All you could find was a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You mixed it all together and made something you never had heard of before, amen. <laughs> took some noodles and took whatever it is you could find and threw it all in a pot. You don't know what to call it, but it was better than nothing. Amen? Amen. She's going out there and she's going to make a little cake and her and her son's going to eat it and they're going to die. What happens? God sends the prophet by the fence there. He says, excuse me, ma'am, could I have something to drink? And remember, they're in the middle of a drought. But she thinks, well, I'll just a little water. Me and my son's fixing to die anyway. <clears throat> And while she's going to get the water, the prophet says, Oh, oh my goodness. Why are you gone? Could you bring me back a piece of bread? She said, As the Lord liveth, all I have is a little bit of oil, a little bit of meal. I'm going to make a cake. Me and my son going to eat it and we're going to die. And you know what the prophet says? He says, You go and do like you said, but bring me a little bit first. And if you'll do that, if you'll put your faith in the Word of God that's being spoken out of the mouth of this prophet, God will see to it that your meal barrel does not waste, that your cruise of oil does not fail. And you know what this little woman does? Oh, all of a sudden she becomes this big superhero of faith? No. She just chose to believe God's Word. She just, in spite of everything that she saw around her, and that's what you're going to have to do, in spite of everything you see, you're going to have to choose to believe God's Word. Because we ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. We're living in the last days and things is going to get rough. And you ain't seen nothing yet. You're going to have to choose to believe God's Word. So this little woman chooses to believe God's Word. She may have put her faith in everything before she got to this point. She might have thought, well, I've got plenty of food to last. Yet every day it dwindled down a little bit more and a little bit more. Surely, maybe she put her faith in the rain, in the rain gods. Maybe she put her faith in the clouds. Amen. And thought, surely, surely rain's going to come till finally she is faced with having to put her faith in the only thing that was going to see her through and save her family. Same thing with you today. The only thing that's going to see you through and save your family is the Word of God. So she goes and stands on God's Word and says, oh, she must have never doubt it after that. Well, I don't believe that. She's fleshed just like the rest of us. She's in there fixing up that meal and the devil's saying, don't you give it, prophet none. You can't afford to give it. You can't afford to give it. Truth is, she couldn't afford not to. You can't afford to give him any of that. Your son, look at your son over there. You're going to take bread out of that boy's mouth to give it to this prophet that came along. Who is he anyway? She's still believing God's Word. She's hearing the doubt. She's hearing everything. Amen. I don't know what was going on in that woman's mind, but there had to be a lot of stuff going on. She's mixing it up. She's frying it. She's cooking it. She takes it out there. She's still believing God's Word. She's still believing God. No, the circumstances don't look any different. She's still, she just used the last meal that she had. Amen. She's still thinking that. She still knows that there's a drought. She still knows the circumstances. She still knows the dilemma that they're in. Yet she's trucking out there and she says, Here, prophet, here's you some water. And here's you a little bit of bread. And she does. Remember what we started preaching with? We started preaching there about James saying, Show me your... Show me your faith and by works or whatever. And, and this little woman, she, she's putting her faith and her works together. She's standing on God's Word and she says, Here, prophet, take this bread, take this water. And the Bible says, guess what? All throughout the famine, her 
in her house, and the prophet did eat. Why? Because she believed God's Word. Because she chose to put her faith in God's Word. You can make it today. I know the devil tells you you're not going to make it. You're going to split hell wide open. But he's a liar and the father of lies. If you put your faith in God's Word this morning, you can make it. You will make it. God's Word is the only thing that's everlasting. God's Word is the only thing that's eternal. I told you, you find in the book of John, the first chapter where it says, in the beginning, and I'm closing, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. And if you'll drop down to verse 14, it says, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So we see that the Word of God was there in the beginning. Amen? Amen. We find over there, if you go all the way over, now listen, if you start in Genesis, you find the Word. If you go all the way over to the book of Revelations, the 19th chapter, you don't have to go there, but I'll read this to you. The 19th chapter, the 11th verse says, I saw heaven open. This is pretty close to the end of the whole book. I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And, his, and with righteousness, in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written which, which, <clears throat> that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Did you hear that? We find the Word in the beginning. We find the Word over there in the book of Revelations. We find that Jesus Christ Himself said in Matthew 24 and 35, Mark 13 and 31, and Luke 21 and 33, Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words shall not pass away. We find this morning that the only thing we can depend on is God's Word. Amen. It was the same yesterday. It is the same today. It will be the same tomorrow. You can't separate God and His Word. They're one and the same. Jesus looked at him one time and He said, You believe that because you know the Scriptures. See, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they had the same problem that a lot of preachers had today. They had so much head knowledge that it was about to blow their brain out their ear. They thought they knew it all. Anybody know any preachers like that? They thought they knew it all. Maybe they ain't preacher. Maybe just somebody sits in a pew next to you. And Jesus said, you think that that causes you to have eternal life. But He said, look at the Scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. He's talking about, you know, their knowledge. But in reality, the, the revelation of eternal life is in the Scripture because He said, the Scripture testifies of Me. These learned men were reading and studying and all this stuff pointed to Jesus, but they were so blind and spiritually ignorant that they couldn't see it. The Word of God will always point you to Jesus Christ. He is the Savior of the world. The Word of God all the way back from the tabernacle that Moses built in the wilderness will point you to the cross. The Word of God testifies of Jesus. The Word of God promises you that you can make it if you put your faith in His Word. In the beginning was the Word. In the end will be the Word. Heaven and earth will pass away. But His Word will never pass away. <clears throat> I've got one or two more scriptures for you. Isaiah put it this way in Isaiah 40 and 6. The voice said, Cry. And he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass. All the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth <clears throat> upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Isaiah is talking about how unstable life is. How that you're here one day and you're gone the next. How that the flowers bloom and they're so pretty, but then they die. But he says the Word of God will remain forever. It will stand forever. So if you're going to build your hopes and dreams on something today, don't let it be built on a person. Don't let it be built on religion. Don't let it be built on denominationalism. Build your life on the Word of God. Amen. Like I said, I may let you down. I may have let you down. But God's Word won't. 
His Word is the same forever and His promises are still true today. Build your faith on nothing less than the Word of God today and you will make it. Hold on to His Word. Hold on to His Word and you'll make it. Somebody else this morning have something. <clears throat>